So a lot of you guys have been asking me to tell you a story about something crazy that happened to me. So this one fits the bill perfectly. My friend Ramin and I, he also plays Pokemon competitively. We had just come back from Nintendo World beating some ass in Pokemon because that's what we used to do back when we used to hang out a lot. We had stayed out until really, really late night. So we're heading back home and we're on the train. And the thing is, is that at late night in New York City, the trains kind of take on a little bit more of a creepy a, cr a creepy feeling to them. Plus, a lot of homeless people or derelicts or crazy people in general are roaming the trains at that time. At that time period, the trains are usually crazy. We're sitting in the station waiting for a certain train to come. We're actually having a Pokemon battle as this is all going on. Thing is, is that we noticed that somebody sat next to us. Looking at the guy, first glance, he's really, really like, he's, he's short, but he's husky. He's really, really fat, and he's got like this trucker hat on. He's black, and on top of everything else, the feature that stuck out the most, which is also what Ramin happened to remember the most about this guy, is that his nose was dripping really badly, really badly. I remember my friend Ramin even told me at that point, dude, there's something wrong with this guy. With his nose dripping like that, there's something wrong with him. Like, that's not normal. That doesn't happen even if you have a cold. And I'm like, okay, then I'll keep my eye on that. I can notice at this point that the guy is starting to try to get a little bit close to me. So he's inching his way over, inching his way over until finally he's like, he's pretty much got his head in my lap and he's looking at the game we're playing. And he's like, <laughs> What game is that? Oh, it's just some Pokemon, you know? Um, me and my friend, we battle. Oh, that's great. That's great, you know? I got games at my house. You should probably come by. Of course, my friend Ramin, he was totally like, you know, dude, we got to get the hell out of here. This guy's going to molest us or something like that. And I'm saying to myself, you know, society always teaches us to be scared of situations like this. We're always taught, you know, don't go with strangers or something. So I'm saying to myself, you know what? Rather than be influenced by the ideology that society is trying to put onto us, let's actually go with experience and learn about what happens. Contrary to what my friend was expecting, I looked to the guy. Yeah, sure, man. Let's hang out a little bit. Ramin, at this point, I can feel his eyes like at the back of my head I turn to look at his face and he's looking at me with that nigga please do not get us killed tonight you know it's gonna be fine with me like we can overpower this guy if we actually need to so it's all good of course Ramin didn't want his friend to get killed that night by himself so of course he goes with me we get on the train with this guy and we like ride the train all the way to like this stop that's not really unfamiliar so I'm kind of comfortable with the stop that we got off at but I'm still on guard while we were on the train by the way he keeps referencing us as his sons and he keeps telling people that we're his boys okay this guy must really have a need for affection because he's referencing us as his sons constantly. At some point, he's not even calling us by our names anymore. I don't even know if he told him our names. We get off the train and we get into a store. The guy is all like, let me buy you some drinks. You know, you guys are good. You got, you're probably thirsty or something like that. Ramin, he wasn't having any of that shit. You know what, Des? We got to get out of here. You cannot be serious. We're not going to this guy's house tonight. And I'm like, Ramin, calm down, man. We, we're we're going to learn about, you know, gonna, we're going to learn about what happens in experiences like this. We'll actually have this to reference later on. And I know he was kind of like really to just knock me out and drag my body back to the train and escape because he was really creeped out by this. I tried to reassure him so everything was all right for now, but things get crazier when we arrive at this guy's house. So the guy opens the door, right? And the first thing that we notice is that he has a massive apartment. Like it's huge, literally. We're saying to ourselves, you know, how can he afford something like this when this guy looks like he's so crazy that he can't even hold a conversation? As we walk into the apartment, there's two things we notice. One, there's somebody in the bathroom. Two, there's another person who's sitting in the corner of the place. He gets up, starts walking towards us, and as he gets closer, we can make out that he's a white guy, kind of tall, really, really skinny though, really, really fragile looking. And he's all like, oh, hey, how you guys doing? Yeah, we're great. The husky guy starts referencing us as his cousins because he said, you know, tell that guy, you know, my cousins or something, you know, don't tell him that you're just strangers that I met on the train because he's not going to like you if that's the case. Tell him that you're my cousins. So, so we're like, oh yeah, we're his cousins. Or rather, I'm like that. Ramin is not having any of this. So I have to like compensate for both of us at this point. So the guy sits down, right? Here's what gets me, like, he pulls up a chair and he sits right next to Ramin, right next to him. And Ramin is already in done mode right now. So he gives me that look, like, and I'm looking at him like, the husky guy finally comes over and he's like, you want to see some portraits of me in my heyday? Sure, why not? He has all these pictures where he's like in pictures with celebrities and certain actors and such. And... I'm trying to like pay attention to what he's saying, but I'm also trying to keep an ear out for what's going on with Ramin and that weird skinny guy. I'm listening in and I overhear the skinny guy say, so we're in a group called Fags. Everything in the room changed. Things went from level 100 to 3000. I'm saying to myself now, what 
in God's name that I just hear. I already know what's going on in my friend's head at this point now. I look at his face and all I see is, is dread. Everything on his face is just melting off. I can't blame him for that. I'm looking at the situation and saying to myself, are we getting butt fucked tonight? Because did this guy really just say what I think he just said? And so then the guy continues talking, right? Yeah, fags. Federationary Association Group something. I can't remember. He gave me some kind of abbreviation to where the name came from. But I didn't even pay attention to it because the first half of that sentence had already ruined the night for me pretty much. So Ramin at this point is in total overdrive mode. He gets up, comes over to me, starts whispering in my ear that we gotta leave. And I keep telling him, you know what, dude, calm down. You know, I think everything will be all right. The guy isn't a fag, he isn't trying to fuck us. But if he does, we can just leave anytime we want to. I guess they could tell that we were sort of uncomfortable after that. So they volunteer to get us drinks and some food. I'm like, yeah, sure, we're down to have some food. Ramin isn't, he's not trying to eat. He's not trying to take his jacket off. He's not even trying to sit down at this point. But I managed to calm him down a little bit so we can sort of like deal with the situation. But at this point, he was so done with it. Like he was ready to jump out the window if he had to. They start to make us chicken, right? The Purdue chicken that goes in the freezer. The guy pulls it out, puts it in the stove, right? Now, Ramin was very, very aware of what was happening with the whole chicken thing. So he looks to me and he says, dude, they ain't cooking that chicken right. And I'm like, they're not cooking it right? What do you mean? I don't know, but they're not cooking it right. There's, that flame isn't hot enough. Now, I find it hilarious that he actually had paid attention to this. I didn't really know much about cooking chicken at the time either. So I'm like, dude, it'll be all right. Don't worry about it. This was until they bought the chicken to us. It was totally white. White on the bone, white everything. The skin was white, everything. It looked like it hadn't really been cooked that much. So I'm saying to myself, it's probably okay, you know? Ramin is looking at me like, nope. It'll be all right, dude. Don't worry about it. Try some of the chicken. You know, take a load off. Relax. It'll all be good. It's no problem. I managed to get him to calm down. I, I'm telling the guy, you know, it's free food. You can't waste free food, right? And Ramin's all like, you know what? You know what, Des? You're right, man. You're right. Let me relax. So he has the chicken, right? He goes to take a bite. Blood squirts out of the chicken, squirts all over the floor. The blood squirted in his mouth as well. This was his exact reaction. I don't even know what to say at this point anymore. I'm just looking at him with the most apologetic eyes possible. He didn't want to talk too loud to get the attention of the weirdos, but he was really disturbed by that. I saw the blood dripping from his mouth. <laughs> at this point, I tried to comfort him. No, don't touch me. No, 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 no. He was done. He, he was pretty much done. Ramin was gone. He, he was gone at this point. There was no getting him back. He was over. So at this point now, I say to myself, all right, it's probably time to go. The moment I say that, the doorbell rings. The black husky guy is all like, who is that? Who is that? The skinny guy is all like, dude, I think it's Q. Q? Who's Q? And the black guy gets a bat, right? Out of nowhere, he gets all aggressive. It's Q. I'm gonna stow fuck him. I'll stow fuck him with this bat. I'm saying to myself, what in God's name? Who's Q? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm Ramin's like, we gotta get out of here before Q gets up here. Cause if Q gets up here, this guy's gonna lose his mind. I don't know who Q is. So then me and Ramin are like, you know, we should try to leave now, guys. It'll be all good. The white guy, he moves like a fucking hawk. Gets in front of us and is all like, no, you guys can't leave yet. Q is out there. And at this point, I'm saying to myself, if I die by the hands of some man named Q tonight, I'm going to lose my shit. I managed to calm down a bit. Ramin is all, he's, he's sprung out at this point. Either way, the black guy goes downstairs, right? And I guess he manages to scare this Q guy away because nothing else happens in that regard. We keep trying to like push the fact that we gotta go, man. We gotta go, we can't stay any longer. You know, we can't chill with you guys any longer. Finally, things are all good. So the black guy, he takes us, right? And we start to go back to the train station. Everything seems good. Ramin is calmed down at this point. And I'm saying to myself, all right, the night's pretty much done. The black guy though, Oh man, he would not stop following us. Things got really critical because now he was saying, maybe I can come visit you guys sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll go home with you. Ramin, he told me, like he, we were talking to each other like through sign language, whispering and eye language at this point. Well, we don't really know sign language, but Ramin was all like, dude, I am not going home if this guy's gonna see where I live. If he sees where I live or where you live, 
this is not going to be a good scenario. He's going to try to break in or something like that. Even though I don't know what the guy's intentions were, I could understand the fact that I did not want this guy to see where I live. We actually start to delay and the guy, we, we actually ride the train with the guy and we're trying to tell our, ask ourselves, you know, how can we escape from this guy? We decide, all right, let's actually take the train to some random location and this way we can kind of like fake that we live there and then he'll walk away. But the guy was insisting that he chill with us. So he was going to stay home with somebody tonight. It wasn't going to be me. It wasn't going to be Ramin. So we had to do something else. Ramin, it, I, I think it was like 4 a.m. at this point now. And we're saying to ourselves, you know, we got to find a way to get out of this situation. Ramin, my friend Ramin, he's like, let's go to my, let's take the train nearby my house. We'll get off nearby and we'll try to see if we can lose this guy. We're walking. After we get out of the train, the guy is just being creepy as all hell, talking about all kinds of crazy stuff that we, like, he, he's talking about having sex with some, some dude and then getting, like, raped by, I, it, it was crazy, man. I can't even remember half the stuff he said, but all that I know is that we did not want to be in that situation anymore. We're walking down the street, and I guess he's feeling like a real confidence boost because he has us with him. There's some girls that were across the street. Most likely they were prostitutes. He is like, all right. Watch me try to spit some game. I'm gonna try to talk to these girls. He starts to walk across the street. Ramin, I think a light bulb went off in his head or something because he gives me that look. It doesn't take me more than two seconds to figure out exactly what his face was saying. The moment that that guy turned around and started walking across the street, when he makes it like halfway, Ramin and I just start running. Like it is, ins we just start running. Like I swear, that is the hardest I've ever run in my lifetime. Like I think at one point our feet weren't even touching the ground. I was pulling off a Shadow the Hedgehog with the skates. We get like a really far distance away. I think we ran like five city blocks in less than 20 seconds. It had to be that because I swear we covered so much ground to the point where we only, only thing that we heard of this guy was his distant screams. We actually managed to escape from the guy, but of course I wanted to troll the Ramin a little bit more. So as we're walking, like I turn around, I say to myself, oh shit, Ramin takes off running and then I say, no, nah, it's all right, dude, don't worry. The guy isn't coming, I'm just joking with you. He looked so angry at me at that point. We could still hear the guy screaming from a really far distance away. Ah! Ah! This pretty much concludes the fact that I'm not leaving anywhere near that time period of where we ditched that guy. So we get to Ramin's house and I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'm staying at your house tonight. There's no way I'm going back out there with this dude searching for us late night. And so things pretty much worked out. I stay at Ramin's house, we wake up in the morning, and we split, go our separate ways, and we never saw that guy again. What did this story teach me? I don't know, it didn't really teach me much. I think the experience was kind of fun. Would I do it again though? M most likely not, no. And Ramin, if you're watching this, I owe you some chicken.